When visiting the Western Front, you'll find many Commonwealth War Grave cemeteries scattering the countryside, such as these two behind me. However, these cemeteries can be placed into four different categories. Battlefield, dressing station, hospital and concentration. On this journey, we will go and discover the difference between all these type of cemeteries and how to identify them when you come to the Western Front. Hello, hello, who's your lady friend? Who's the little girlie by your side? I've seen you with a girl or two. Oh, 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 I'm surprised at you. Hello, hello, stop your little games. Don't you think your age you ought to mend? It isn't the girl I saw you with the Brighton. Although no two cemeteries are the same, they do follow very similar patterns, such as this low wall and low hedgerow, to resemble the low walls and hedgerows of Old English churchyard cemeteries. Usually, the smaller cemeteries have a small wrought iron gate, similar to the ones you'll find at an Old English churchyard, but the larger ones you'll find a large built structure, just like this one, that resembles the type of lynch gate that can also be found in the Old English churchyards. In all but the smallest cemeteries is this black box. Inside, it contains the burial register. This is a document that contains all the burial locations in a cemetery, making it far easier for visitors to find a Pacific soldier. This is the Stone of Remembrance. You'll only find this in cemeteries with over a thousand soldiers. However, there is sometimes exceptions to this rule where cemeteries just shy of a thousand will have this stone in place. But what's the purpose of the stone? Well, the purpose of this stone is it makes it a focal point for people of all faiths and creeds and beliefs to come together at this stone in the act of remembrance. No two graves are the same. Each is unique, but they all follow the same basic principle. They exist to remember the sacrifice given by that particular soldier, without prejudice nor favour over any other grave. Each Commonwealth graveyard is unique. Some have only three or four burials, some have thousands. Occasionally, you will even find German soldiers buried in Commonwealth war graves. Headstones also serve the purpose of remembering the regimental corps that the soldier served in, as well as any decorations bestowed upon them through bravery. Here can be seen the grave of double Victoria Cross recipient, Captain Chavas, one of only three men to ever be awarded the Victoria Cross twice. Notably, Commonwealth war graves also celebrate the diverse backgrounds and faiths of the wider members of the Commonwealth. The Cross of Sacrifice is the most dominant feature of a Commonwealth War Grave Cemetery. However, they do vary in size, and to have a cross of sacrifice, there must be 40 graves or more, although there is some exceptions to this rule. This cross of sacrifice behind me stands alone here at Railway Wood that saw horrific mine warfare during the First World War and the scars of which can still be seen today. During this mining warfare, eight Royal Engineers from 177 Tunnelling Company and four attached infantrymen are lost somewhere on this ridge and their bodies were never recovered. So the engineers of 177 erected a very simple cross where the monument now stands today along with the names of those missing men somewhere in this ridge. When the war was over, the men of 177 Tunnelling Company came back to this location to see if the cross was still there. The cross was still there, but unfortunately it had been damaged by shell fire and all they could find was the scattered remains of that simple cross. Not disheartened, the engineers built a new one and re-erected it in the same spot. In the early 1920s, one of the officers who had served in 177 Tunnelling Company here at Railway Wood wrote to the Imperial War Graves Commission what they were known as back then. 
to ask them if they could have headstones or some form of monument to commemorate these missing men whose bodies were never found in this ridge. Touched by the story, the Imperial War Graves Commission decided they were going to place a cross of sacrifice instead of a monument. But on that cross of sacrifice are the names of those missing men still here in this ridge, along with a cap badge of the Royal Engineers to its front, making this a very unique memorial. I'm here at Pulse Point Cemetery. This is a battlefield cemetery, but how do I know that this is a battlefield cemetery? Well, for a start, you've got to look at the cemetery itself. You've got graves that are not uniformed. They're quite scattered around in a non-uniform sort of way. So these are men that have been buried in a hurry. So these are blokes who have been buried at different time periods. They just found a plot and placed them in. So you've got four men here, a line of men here, two men just here, and they've got little clumps at the back and a great big open space in the centre. Well, why haven't they used that open space? Maybe they have, because it's a battlefield cemetery. So although you've got these uniform lines in the background, they might not necessarily be underneath the tombstones. Because we're on the front line, these experienced a lot of shell fire. Remember, we're in range of artillery fire. So some of these graves could actually be in that green space. But because it got obliterated by shell fire, they've just uniformed it because they know the men who are in here. But then unfortunately, the other telltale sign of a battlefield cemetery can also be the amount of unknown soldiers that were there. Because when they come back to clear the cemetery up, they could no longer identify who the soldier was underneath it. The other point is, well, I've got this trench map. This is an origin, uh, a copy of an original map from the time period. I can see the British front line, which just runs about 300 metres to my right. And Prowse Point is marked here as well. So that is right on top of the front line. And that's another way of identifying a battlefield cemetery, because these battlefield cemeteries are named after certain points on the front line. So get yourself a trench map and look at the trench map. And if it got Prowse Point, Mud Corner, down at the very bottom as well, because they're naming them after certain sectors of where they are. Typically located in cellars and buildings, dressing stations were the first port of call for wounded soldiers. They were located close to the front line and priority was always given to soldiers with the highest chances of survival. The immediate environs around them became the final resting place for many a soldier wounded during battle. If the soldier showed signs of surviving his wounds, he would be moved on to the next port of call in the chain of evacuation, the field hospital. This is Lysenthorpe Military Cemetery. Now this was a field hospital. So how can we identify this as a field hospital? Well, the graves, very much like the casualty clearing station, the graves are very close together because they're trying to get as many men in here as possible. But also what you're seeing is, is a lot of men dying on the same day. So all they're doing is they're creating one large trench and they're placing all the bodies in there then covering all the soil over on top of them, having to make the graves a lot closer together. But also where this is now behind the lines, because we're right by Poppering here, so we're well out of reach of artillery fire. A lot of the graves all have identities, unlike the battlefield cemeteries or the concentration cemeteries who don't because some of them just could not be identified. But here they are because they already have their credentials on them and it could be recorded in the right manner. But this cemetery itself can be easily confused as a concentration cemetery just from the sheer number of graves that are here. There's around about 9,000 of them, but it's not. It is actually a hospital cemetery. I am at Tynecott Cemetery, the largest Commonwealth War Grave Cemetery in Europe, and this was created as a concentration cemetery. But what makes it a concentration cemetery? The cemetery started life as a field dressing station, which was located behind me where the Cross of Sacrifice now stands. Being a field dressing station, obviously men are going to die. And they created a small battlefield cemetery right beside it. 
When the war was finally over, the big clean-up operation of the battlefield begun. So the landowners and farmers could come back and reclaim their land. Part of this job was going around all the scattered cemeteries and singular burials that needed to be re-exhumed and moved back to this location, but also trying to find some of them soldiers that were lost in the Flanders mud. But who were these men who had to find these missing soldiers? Fabian Ware, pictured here, was the founder of the Imperial, now Commonwealth, Wargraves Commission in 1917. During the Great War, he worked for the Red Cross in France and formed the Wargraves Commission in order that the bodies of fallen soldiers from the battlefields could be reburied in permanent cemeteries with proper headstones. The Graves Registration Unit, which was formed in October 1915 following the offensives at both Luz and Gallipoli, bore the responsibility to locate, identify and inter casualties across the battlefields of the Great War for all Commonwealth nations. Body density maps such as this were created by the Graves Registration Units and they outline the number of bodies located by the units in each particular area. This practice continued for many years after the war and for all intents and purposes is still ongoing today. So with the grid references on this document, I spoke to my friend Rob Frush who knows pretty much everything about First World War Ordnance Survey maps of the First World War. And he's translated it and he found an original map and gave me the grid reference and this grid reference has brought me here and this is the exact spot of where a soldier from this document has been buried and it says on the document there was no grave marker so how were these reinterment units finding these men well they'd use their eyes to start off with they could be scanning the ground see disturbances if they could and then another thing they would use as well they'd use a, a cleaning rod from a lewis gun or a vickers gun sorry they'll take the, take the rod they'll plunge it into the ground bring it back up and they'll taste the end of it because they're used to the smell of death they can't smell the decaying flesh but they could still taste it so they would taste the end and if they could taste it they spit it out and go, right, put a marker down and they'll dig up the man. So they'll dig the soldier up, collect what information they can from him, see if they can catalogue it, and then they'll move him to a concentration cemetery. And here they all are. So those lads from this location that we've just been to were all exhumed together and reburied together as well, which was great to see, especially considering the amount of men they're having to dig up and reinter. So, let's have a look at the list. Severs, yep. Baldwin, yep. There's an unknown soldier, yep, there he is. Unidentified British soldier, but they found his cap badge, so his cap badge is on the stone. That's brilliant. And Ball, as well. All of them are on the list, which is amazing. But there's one name at the very bottom of this list that's very special to me. Albert Neil was my great, great, great uncle who was killed at the Battle of Menine Road on the 25th of September, 1917. And now our journey comes to an end. And I hope you found this journey interesting and educational at the same time. And if you'd like to learn more or support the work that the Commonwealth War Graves Commission do, we'll leave a link in the description below. And if you indeed like to support us at Living History UK and the work that we do, We'll also leave a link to our Patreon, where you can be a patron for as little as £1 a month. But until next time, keep history alive! Well, how do you do, Private William McBride? Do you mind? If I sit here down by your graveside And rest for a while Neath the warm summer sun I've been walking all day Oh, I'm nearly done I see by your gravestone You were only 19 When you joined the great fallen in 1916 
I hope you died well and I hope you died clean Oh young Willie McBride was it slow and obscene Did he beat the drum slowly and play the fife lowly And sound the death march as they lowered you down Did the band play the last post and chorus did the pipes play the flowers of the forest? Living History UK. Keeping history alive.